Ambika Waters is a homeopath, author, trained artist, educator, and has more than 50 years of experience as a natural healer. She is the founder of the Institute of Life Energy Medicine, where she has taught classes about human energy system, chakras, and much more. Today, we are lucky to talk to her about healing, energy, and finding balance within while the external world continues to shift into a state of what many often, often say is a constant state of unbalance. Ambika, thank you for entering the fourth dimension with us and our listeners. Um, if you guys are, are interested in this talk and, and you took something from it, please visit her website at lifeenergymedicine.com. You can get free meditations, take online classes, uh, read her work, and, and learn a lot. So uh, how are you doing today, first of all? I'm fine, thank you. And thank you, Jeremy, for having me on the pro- podcast. We really appreciate your time. And I, I, I want to start, um, you know, you, you have, such, have had such a wide array of experiences with spirituality and energy and healing. Um, but just to start off, if, if you had to give that one thing that you hold on to that you're most passionate about that you would want to leave someone with who are either beginning their spiritual journey or hoping to enhance their spiritual journey, what, what are you most passionate about right now when it comes to energy and healing and spirituality? Well, that's a big question. I'm passionate about all of it. I'm a homeopath, so I'm passionate about health. And health is deep, it's, it's mental balance, it's emotional stability, it's physical vitality and stamina. And in these days, a lot of resilience. I'm passionate about meditation. I love meditation and I think it is the single greatest tool we have for consciousness, for centering, for connecting with the spirit realm. I love the realm of angels, I love the realm of fairies and elementals. I write books on, I've written several books on the realm of angels, and I'm continuously exploring the natural world, looking for remedies and medicines. I have a beautiful garden that I tend every morning for a good hour with hawks and lizards and rabbits and whatever decides to come visit me. (laughs) And... uh, (laughs) And I draw some of my medicines from my garden. So I love the natural world. I love the world. And I'd sure like to see people center more into who they are, not be brainwashed by the media, not be overcome by fear. Fear is uh, deadly, especially now. I treat COVID as a homeopath. I've had 10 cases. and. I have to tell you that it's easier to treat than the common cold. And that I find that very upsetting in actual fact. I find the fact that it's so easy to treat homeopathically. Why isn't the world getting on board? Because I'm telling you, it takes four, four to five remedies to treat a cold. It takes one single remedy to treat COVID. So I'm just kind of gobsmacked about how that's possible. So passion, yes, you have to have passion to, to be willing to make the spiritual journey. It's an up and uphill, down valleys, uphill, down valleys, um, and then uphill, uphill, uphill. <laughs> yeah. Well, I want to touch on the on the the COVID topic for a second since you brought it up. Um, so you're a, a homeopathic healer, meaning you draw from natural inspirations, uh, f- using the world right a- around you and, and natural remedies. Um, it, how would you describe your work? Homeopathy is a, it's a complete medicine, according to the FDA. It was developed 250 years ago by Samuel Hahnemann, who's a German medical doctor who was a very uh, upset with the medical practice of his day. Uh, it was during the time of the Napoleonic plagues and uh, people were dying. The doctors were losing 10 out of 10. The homeopaths were saving nine out of 10. And what it is, it's anything in the natural and even the imponderable world of light, X-ray, um, that is the energy is captured in water and potentized what we call dynamic potentization. So high levels of dilution, continual levels of dilution to treat the physical pathology, the mental and emotional realms. Um, It doesn't go into the spiritual realm, but it clears out the blocks like anger and fear and anxiety 
and it builds immunity. That's the single most important thing that I see that it does. It gets rid of genetic predisposition like cancer and mental illness and heart disease and diabetes. It helps to create a level of immunity that is what I call steel against stone. Strong immunity is everything today. And it's, um, it's a wonderful medicine for children, for fertility, for old people, for chronic conditions. If people are interested, they can read more about it online. They can certainly go to my website. I also develop products. I'm a product developer. So I've made homeopathic color and sound remedies. I've made homeopathic remedies out of the chakra colors, the spectral colors, and out of the, um, the notes of the, of the cord. So, and they're very powerful healers. They may sound like, oh, she's playing with color and sound, but they go in deeply. They're very, very effective in the treatment of autism and in balancing what is going on in the body. That's why my interest in chakras, I've written eight books on the chakras, and then I was able to link the chakra system to homeopathy. And I did that in 1990 when I was a student in England uh, in homeopathic college and been doing it ever since. So I, I wanna get into, into the healing aspect and colors and, and chakras, um, but first on, on, the, on the note where you said you've, you've been healing people with COVID, what does that look like? You said it's one remedy. They come remedy. and it's all they all have the same symptoms. Interesting. Because you don't like you said, it's all the media shows you one thing, but you don't hear about building your immune system. You don't hear about natural remedies like you don't that. even hear about taking vitamin C. You don't hear yeah, about anything but wearing C. a mask and you know, stay in lockdown. I it's really amazing to me because I've treated so much chronic illness and because I, you know, I treat families, I treat colds, sore throats, blah, blah, blah. But this is exhaustion, a really purulent sore throat, not just a little achy sore throat. I mean, a serious sore throat. One little 11 year old boy in LA who I treated, he said, oh mom, it's like when I drink hot chocolate and it's too hot. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a burning sore throat Sometimes there's um, a congestion, but sometimes there's not. But the fatigue, the, there's a cough, and there's a sore throat. And they're, they're not light symptoms. They're, you know, like, oh, I feel like I'm going to lay down and go to sleep right now. One single remedy, and it all clears up. And it's just fascinating to me. I treated people in LA, Florida, Tucson. And yesterday, people in England, in Leeds, England, uh, who know my work. So and there's not color remedies. These are classical homeopathic remedies that I'm using. Also, there is a preventative uh, that we have been using. It came from a homeopath in India named Rajan Sankaran, who's a world-class homeopath. And he has us taking uh, camphor, homeopathic camphor, 1M, which is a thousand dilutions, four pills, two days in a row, and that's it. I've done that uh, three times since uh, the beginning of February, and I've given it to virtually every person I know who's willing to take it. So all my students take it, all my clients have it. Uh, they can get that from a homeopathic pharmacy. You can't get that from Whole Foods. It's not that kind of, it's not carried in their line. You buy that online? You might be able to get it online, but look up homeopathic pharmacy okay. and ask camphor 1M. It's very simple preventative, very, very simple. And- um, That's amazing. I think more like, if you are listening to this and you're looking for ways to keep yourself healthy, boost your immune system and prevent uh, any spread of this disease to you, look that up please and take this seriously because uh, like she's seen a lot of success with this, so. Well, it's, it's just amazing. It doesn't have to be as dramatic. It certainly doesn't have to be a death sentence. Um, I treated a 67-year-old woman, a 25-year-old girl, her daughter, and her grandson, who was four yesterday, 
she got in touch with me. She said she had these symptoms. They all had exactly the same symptoms. And I repeatedly see, this is exactly what I've seen every time I've treated somebody. And I gave her the protocol and she said, sent an email back today saying, we're all better. Thank wow. you. And, and, and for, those, for those people who are listening who might actually have COVID right now, um, if they go to your website, it's their products that they can actually buy. Um, well, they need to say who they are and what, what they want because th that product is not, it's available in homeopathic pharmacies, but it's not on my website. That is not on my website. Okay. Do you know, is there a name for that product that they can look I up? Can't, I can't give that over. I'm sorry. I just can't. It would be prescribing medicine. Um, it, it's just out of the boundaries of my legal and okay. ethical. Um, well, I think, I think you've, you've, if anything, you've given a valuable uh, preventative. And, and I'm, I'm really glad we, we talked about that because I wasn't even planning on it. But I do want to touch on chakras and and energy and color and you know just for people who might not be as familiar i just started my journey with understanding balancing my chakras and i've been doing meditations for each one individually and using different frequencies to touch uh, each chakra but for someone just beginning um what would you tell them in terms of what what these energy centers represent within them and maybe some basic techniques on how to balance that whether it's through sound or color or energy Sure, let's start at the base chakra because it's always the most interesting. The, the root chakra grounds us in life. It's the, it's the core energy for living on this earth. It's about how we survive. And I give the, the chakra a form. So the form I use for the root chakra is a large red cube. And in the meditation, I ask you to visualize the large red cube. And the qualities are patience, structure, security, stability, the right to your own life, and organization, order in the economy. If you find yourself weak in any one of these qualities, you can build this in through meditation. Patience is the hardest one for most people today, to just be patient and let time heal wounds and trust that in the cycle of life, you too will count. So when I find people who are highly impatient, who are um, irritable, irritable and impatient, to sit them down and to help them focus on the now, just in the now, that helps heal the root chakra. The root chakra carries ancestral chi, ancestral karma is built into the root chakra. So most of us came from someplace else. Very few people I know are living where they started or where their parents started or where their grandparents started. We, especially in North America, we move, we're mobile, but we have a hard time planting roots. And roots give us stability. Mm. Roots give us the wisdom to let the good come to us. Roots give us a structure that we can create, that we like and love, because without a structure you love, you're gonna be unhappy doing, just putting food on the table. So creating a structure that really supports your spirit, that's part of the root chakra. It may take a long time and many trainings. Lord knows I've been training for years. I didn't finish my training until I was over 50. That's a lot of training. Mm -hmm. But then I settled down and started working and I haven't stopped. I'm, that's 25 years ago. So I believe, I believe in structure. I believe in structure. And I believe in the right to your own life. When I told my family I wanted to be a homeopath, they didn't even know what it was. And when they, when they heard what it was, it was like, how can you waste your life on something that nobody knows anything about? They were confirmed in the allopathic conventional medical model. And it was just a shame because, you know, they wouldn't take the remedies that could have helped them. And they, they suffered a lot with medications and surgeries. And it was painful. It was painful for me to watch people suffer. But I'm going to be 75 next month, and I have the vitality of a 35-year-old woman and the bone structure to match. So I know about this medicine. 
it has, uh, I went to the eye doctor a few months ago because I thought I might need a new uh, prescription for my glasses and I hadn't been for six years. That's a long time. And he said, no, you don't need glasses. I said, are you sure? He said, no, no, your eyes haven't changed in six years. Wow. I, mean, I, mean, I said, okay, thanks. That's homeopathy. And he said, what do you mean? So, you know, you get a chance to educate somebody. But I'm very grateful for this medicine. God bless it. it it's the medicine of our time. Acupuncture, homeopathy, Reiki, hands-on healing, chiropractic, good diet, prayer, meditation, reflection, simplicity, truth, and love. Those are the things that will get us through challenging times. How important is connecting with your ancestry? Because that's something I know we've been super interested in and just kind of how things get passed down and, and, and even going back into past lives potentially. Um, and you said it's really important to kind of ground yourself with those roots, not only in, in who you are in your life, but past lives and, and, and generations past. Um, what are some ways that people can connect with, with that history? Well, I do think things pass a generation. So I often look at the grandparents and sometimes the great grandparents. Things like mental illness, for instance. If you look at some photographs of your grandparents, four sets of grandparents, you might see that somebody's kind of shifty or somebody's depressive. And you wonder why you have moments of depression or your cousin has moments of depression. Or, I mean, these are people who went through major changes. They not only changed towns, they changed continents. For many people, they changed continents. They came from Europe or Middle East or Asia or South America to come to North America. I mean, that's a huge adaptation, huge adaptation. And in the process, people who were not robust fell through the cracks. And that stuff gets passed down with mother's milk. I believe that, not just attitudes about uh, how life is, but you talked about past life. I don't think past lives necessarily uh, are a match for the ancestors, the actual bloodline. There's the bloodline and then there's past life, which is about spiritual karma and how we clean that up. Forgiveness, forgiveness is probably the single greatest healing tool we have and gratitude. So, and they are in the next chakra, which is the sacral chakra that we need to, to have unconditional love for the sufferings that our ancestors had in, in their lifetime and the, what they made of life. If somebody wasn't educated or nobody had told a woman that she could make her own way in the world, she would have a slave mentality that she was, couldn't live without being devoted to children and her husband and the family structure. You know, up until, what, 50 years ago, nobody was, no woman was really stepping out into her own life. So women have got a lot to learn about forgiveness. They want to blame men, but it isn't about men. It's just that women have never dared do it. And men are also finding whole new pathways of bringing enlightenment and spirituality into their lives and making the world a better place. It's an exciting time. If you can look past the damage, the collateral damage, of the past six months particularly, it's very, there's some very exciting things happening. We're in a time of flux. We're in a time of change. So clearing out the patterns of the root chakra are quintessential to spiritual development. And the patterns are fear, 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 fear of us, fear of them. This is the chakra of separation of us and them. And this is where things like racism get caught up, anti-Semitism gets caught up. All these things that we think we're better than them, who are we kidding? Who are we kidding? Nobody's better than anybody. We're all in this mess together. And only in togetherness and unity will we heal it. So a lot of forgiveness for the bullies, for the depressed women, for the mean-spirited people, for the 
for the thievery, for the rape, for the, for the endless things that ancestors were faced with. Forgiveness is the only way, and you can only do it by talking to them in spirit. I looked at some photographs. My sister collects endless family photographs, and I was looking at this. I have a great-grandmother who was incredibly depressive-looking. I mean, she was mis misery was written on her forehead. And I kept looking at it because her husband was very robust and very handsome and outgoing. You could see that in him. And I knew his children because my grandmother was one of their kids. And I could see the mental illness in this woman passed down through the fam family bloodline. And you have to say, I don't even know her name. The truth of it was, I knew his name, my great grandfather's name, but I didn't know her name. I don't even know if she had a name because she didn't like look like a person who had entity, any self identity at all. So in spirit, I went to her and I blessed her and I loved her and I forgave her for, for passing that down with her, mm. with, her breast, with her breast milk in actual fact. You know, it just, that stuff gets passed down. So there, there's no way you can't ban somebody from being in your bloodline, but you can bless them and you can forgive them. Mm. And that's what I know to do. Because once you start doing that, you start to free yourself of the, from being hooked in to that, whatever that craziness was about. We want to free ourselves of it. And that's why we do the work to free ourselves to let go of what we learned in church or what we learned from school or what we learned from our family. Before I traveled, my, my parents used to say, nobody can love you like your parents. Nobody can love you like your family. I used to think, really? <laughs> really? Until I got out into the world and I saw many people could love me as much as my parents, if not more so, because they accepted me for who I am, not what I should have yeah. been. So all that stuff is, it boils down to forgiveness and gratitude. Gratitude for good genes, because some of those people who came over from God knows where, from the cold, from the misery, from the poverty, from the famines, from the oppression, they had huge amounts of courage. And when I was traveling, there were times I would get frightened and I would think about them coming to um, America. And I thought, what did they have that I don't have? And I thought, they have courage. They had tremendous courage. And sometimes I would pull it out of my bone marrow. I'm not kidding. I would just go deep inside and I'd pray for courage. Mm. I can do this. I can do this. So it's almost harnessing the energy that they they yes. had and and forgiving the energy they lacked that's right and for the for the boo-boos that they made and for the incredibly powerful things that they were willing to do to make their life better you've got to hand it to people who crossed oceans yeah worked for pennies slaved in you know, sweatshops, God knows what people were willing to do for their kids to get an education and a better way of life. That's courage. That's grit. Yeah. That's commitment. That's and who commitment. didn't have the choice necessarily, who were brought here enslaved and, and still had, yeah. you know, the courage to, to live or, or, yes. or to make it through that, the strength um, and pass yeah. that down. And, and many of them were really, um, blessed by community, the Italian community, the Jewish community, the black community, the Polish community, the Croatian community. You come from Canada, you have the same thing of community and it's community that sustain them. Churches sustain yeah. them. But there's a point now where we're, we've outgrown a lot of that. We don't need to be told what to do. We need to be free to be able to think for ourselves and make wholesome choices. Wholesome choices is a huge part of healing. You know, put the drugs away. Stop drinking. Stop thinking that, you know, you've got forever because you don't. You don't. What is a wholesome choice? 
something that honors your spirit, anything that honors your spirit and is loving is a wholesome choice. Interesting. And then uh, last question, because there's so many things, you know, you touched on that I'd love to get into, but I know uh, we have limited time. So last question, uh, more specifically on, on color healing. In our last episode, we talked about sound healing and frequencies and binaural beats and stuff like that. But how can colors come into play um, when you're meditating, when you're focusing on your chakras, when you're trying to heal certain parts of your body? Right. So the root chakra's color is red. The sacral chakra is orange. The solar plexus is yellow, the heart is green and pink, the throat chakra turquoise, the brow chakra indigo or deep blue, the crown chakra violet, and above the crown chakra, the ultimate chakra magenta. And those are the homeopathic color remedies that I've made in those colors, and they really work to open and balance the chakras. The sound remedies, the, the color works on what we call the etheric body, which is the energy body. The sounds work on the astral body, which is the body about mentality, aversion, and desire. We call it in homeopathy. So, and should you work. like visualizing those colors specifically Absolutely. in younger. the chakra, in the chakra with the form? The form, the form is the thought. The color is the energy. So the red cube the orange pyramid, the yellow globe, the um, heart chakra is a crescent moon that goes from shoulder blade to shoulder blade. The throat chakra is an inverted pyramid. The brow chakra is a star. And those things are on my website. Well, we, I, I was at, my computer is about to die, so I'm like plugging it in last minute, but, um, but yeah, thank you so much for, for the insight into so many of those things. I think there's practical things that people can use, uh, like you talked about the medicine preventative. There's some more spiritual things that people can use um, in terms of connecting to their roots, their ancestry. And then there's daily meditation things people can use with the color and the chakra. So And prayer. Don't ever <laughs> underestimate the power of prayer. It's huge. It's huge to access the spirit realm to call for goodness, to call for help, to ask the angels to bless you and bless people around you. That's huge today. And yeah. Important. Really and, important. And we didn't get, get to get into it today, but I, I am super interested in the fact that you said you only uh, paint angels and that that's what, what comes through you. So I think that's super interesting in itself. Well, Give me a call and we'll do this again because I've enjoyed sharing this with you. And thank you so much for having me on your podcast. Yeah, thank you so much. And be sure to go check out her website. We'll put the links everywhere. But thank you so much and, and continue doing the good work. Thank you.